everyone, it's Keely for Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. Today I'm not making a loaf of soap. Today I'm taking you along as I make my foaming sugar scrubs. There's a couple of ways in which you can make a foaming sugar scrub and the easiest way to do that is to purchase in the pre-made base, whip it up, add colour, fragrance um, and your sugar, pot it up, label it and away you go. But here at Soy and Shea I like to pre-make all of my own bases using raw ingredients so I know exactly what's gone into them and this also helps with labeling of my products. When I knew that I wanted to add foaming sugar scrub into my range, I knew I had to learn how to make the base to go with it. And that was mainly because I actually don't like some of the ingredients that are a part of that pre-made base. And I also feel that that pre-made base is a little bit too stiff for the products that I wanted to create. So I set about looking for a recipe and I came across Sandra's shop on Etsy called DIY Bath and Body and I have asked permission to be able to show you this to show you how I make the base um, and also to leave you some links to her recipe down below. I highly recommend purchasing her foaming bath butter. When I found it I had a look at what ingredients were included within her recipe because she does disclose them on her Etsy page. She doesn't tell you the recipe you have to purchase it, but she does tell you what ingredients that you need to make this bath, this foaming bath butter. I liked all of the ingredients that were shown there. They made sense to me as to why they would be in the product, but she does actually give a breakdown within the file that you get sent of what the ingredients are for and what they do within the product. She also gives you some ideas of what you can make from this base as well. It is a really good gentle cleansing base and I highly recommend her recipe. I have changed it by accident. I was making it one day and I had pretty much all the ingredients in the pot and I was short of one of my liquid surfactants. I don't really have any suppliers around here locally that sell it. I had to have a look in my drawer to see what other liquid surfactants I had in there. I found one which I felt was very close to the one that I was short of and would also add a few other conditioning properties um, to my overall product and I ended up putting that in and getting a really nice um, foaming bath butter at the end of it. So I now do add this extra ingredient into the base every time I make it but in all honesty if I hadn't have made that mistake I would never have changed her recipe because it is really nice very simple you throw it all into the pot um, melt it down preserve it and then make your products from there but I'll show you how we do that in the next part so for now I have gone through I've sterilized all my benches with um, bleach all my equipment as well I have my overcoat on it's a warm day so as I go backwards and forwards to this pot I'll be putting my um, coat on and off and then um, I also have my gloves and my hairnet so let's go and make this foaming sugar scrub. Today I am making a 3 kilo batch of this base. So I'm going to be using my slow cooker, but you can also use the double boiler method over on the stove top as well. Just for this amount I find my slow cooker best, but when I'm only making a kilo then I put it into a double boiler system. I'm just going to tear that out and the first ingredient I'm putting in is some distilled water. Now the, I see on a lot of the groups and things when it comes to distilled water, people in Australia have difficulty finding it. Um, I have discovered it is all dependent upon what your local area wants. So most people say they find it in Coles and Woolworths. My Coles and Woolworths don't sell distilled water, they only have demineralized water and I've had to go to the IGA to buy it. So if you can't find it in Coles or Woolworths, go to your local IGAs to have a look. So my next ingredient I am adding into the pot is some SCI granules. Now I'll put the full name of this ingredient up on the um, screen. I'm just not going to even try and pronounce it. It is derived from coconuts and it's a very mild surfactant but it is also very airborne so if you're very prone to um, dusts and things make sure you're wearing a mask when doing this and just work with it very carefully to make sure that it doesn't foof everywhere and this is one of the reasons <coughs> See, that's got to me. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the reasons I've actually put my water in first. 
So I'm just going to very carefully pop that into the water. granules to actually melt down you need some cocoa betaine in here as well so I'm going to tear that out and I'm going to pour that in okay, so that I don't give too much away about her recipe I'm going to finish adding in the rest of my ingredients um, if you are interested as I said go and have a look at her um, her Etsy shop and she will have all of them listed on there. in here and as you can see it is extremely full I usually only do about two two and a half kilos in here but as I needed about oh, 600 grams I think it is to make my order I went for the three kilos so I'm just going to gently stir that in I basically have all of the ingredients that is required for this except for the preservative in here what we're going to do is pop it into the slow cooker with the lid on and I am going to very carefully watch this over the next sort of 40 minutes, giving it a stir here and there until it all melts down and incorporates into each other. This has been warming for about 30 minutes now and I've just come to give it another stir. I can see that the SCI is starting to melt down but it's still not quite there. You can see all these little white sort of dots all over here and that is the SCI granules still there. Now mine will usually take a little bit longer than what the recipe um, states because I use SCI in noodle format. SCI comes in three different sort of um, sizes I guess you'd say. You can get a powdered um, I can't remember what the middle one is and then there's the noodle format the noodle format being the biggest um, sort of almost if you looked at it say rice and rice flour rice flour is a fine powder whereas rice you can actually see the grains so I buy my SCI in the noodle format two reasons one is that I can actually buy a great big five kilo bucket of it relatively cheaply from True Lux here in Australia much cheaper than the powder format there's a lot more processing that goes into the powders and they lose a lot of it in that processing so hence it does cost a lot more but I also find with the powdered format when I first started doing it it used to get up my nose down my throat and I would be on the verge of having an asthma attack whereas with the noodles I find I can pop them through my processor to break them down a little bit and it doesn't irritate me nearly as much um, because it doesn't get as airborne. Um, it is still a very safe product to use. Once it's wet, it, it's not airborne anymore, but that's why I stick to the noodles, but they do take longer than your powdered format. So we'll leave that going probably for about another 20 minutes and we'll come back and have a look. So it's been about 50 minutes to an hour and I'm pretty sure that this is pretty much there. There are still some of the little beady bits in here but I'm pretty sure once we get this blended it will be all nice and smooth. So what I'm now going to do is grab my stick blender. I'm going to give this a bit of a whiz up and then we will leave it to cool. with how that has all come together so I'm just going to push that out of the way I'm popping a towel down just to protect my work surface here and I'm going to take my crock pot out of the metal container 
and the towel is simply to protect my work surface and I'm taking it out of the metal parts so that this can cool down. I need it to come down between 30 and 40 degrees before I can add my preservative. Always check your preservative that you're using, what temperatures it can hold before it burns off and also don't add it too cool otherwise it can't activate the um, preservative to keep your product nice and safe as well. So I'm going to leave that for about four to five hours, come back and add my preservative and then I will leave it overnight to set. So this has been cooling for the last four hours and you can start to see that there's some um, chunks of white and there's still some quite translucent pieces in here as well. It's sitting at about 41 degrees Celsius but while it's still fluid and movable like this I'm going to add in my preservative. So we'll just move that one out the way and bring the scales back in and just make sure that they're nice and level there up on to my scales and I'm going to add this in. I use Nipigard as my preservative. Um, it is paraben and sulfate free. Right, so we're gonna give this a really good mix to make sure that that preservative is fully incorporated. And then what I'm going to do is, because this does set up quite firm um, into the container, I have this bucket, I'll just grab it here. I have this bucket which I have cleaned out and sterilized and I am now going to pour the mixture into here and then I'm going to leave it to cool overnight and tomorrow we'll come back and we'll do the sugar scrubs. So this has been cooling and settling overnight and you can see we have a very white and it's quite pearlescent creamy base it's quite solid but also quite soft at the same time and this is the base that I'm now going to use to make the foaming sugar scrub so let's go make some I will be using my stand mixer today to do this I'm going to grab my scales here and the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to do one fragrance at a time because I do need quite a lot of each fragrance and my poor little mixer can only cope with so much product in it at a time. So I've just teared my scales off and the first one I'm going to work with is white driftwood and coconut and this is because this particular um, scrub is a white scrub and so I don't want to contaminate my bowls. I do clean them out in between each use but sometimes the mica um, leaves behind little bits of colour and I don't want any colour in my white driftwood one. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure out the amount of this foaming bath butter I need into my bowl and then I'm going to put it into the blender and whip it up. to whip it enough that you double it in size but don't over whip it to the point that it collapses on itself again so I have got about double the amount in there so now what I'm going to do is add the rest of my ingredients and then give it a, another blitz up before we pot it
do a sugar scrub you can um, spoon these into the pots I have a find that I am particularly messy doing this so I like to put mine into a piping bag and pipe it into the pots people when they make foaming sugar scrubs who pipe it into their containers using one of the really pretty piping tips so it makes lots of frills as they pipe it in. Now I have tried that in the past but what I found was that with transferring my sugar scrubs to and from the markets that eventually and even when it went through the post that eventually those frills collapsed in on each other and one of the things with those frills is that they are actually taking up space within the jar but not necessarily weight so when those frills all collapsed in on themselves and created like that flat sort of look that you see in my um, foaming sugar scrubs that the, when you open the jars they actually looked half empty so I decided that I would much rather just fill the jars up without all the pretty swirls that um, you see in so many of the photographs even though I absolutely love that look. To doing the very last of these scrubs and this is a new fragrance I've added to my range which is marshmallow it's a very very sweet fragrance and it is very very musky I don't usually like fruit sweet fragrances but I do like this and the first time I made it I made sure I had enough left over for me to have some in the shower as well and it really is a nice fragrance now as you can see I split my batter up into two. This was the first time I ever decided to try doing two toned um, sugar scrubs. So I really liked the appearance of it and I don't do anything too fancy. I basically put half the amount of what I need into the pot in um, one, one colour. Oops. And then I will come back in with the pink and fill up the pot with the pink. start labeling and doing the final preparations for all of these products.
So we are now done and I'm ready to go and box these up to ship them out. The two sizes you've seen me make today are my large which holds 220 grams and my extra large which is 400 grams. I also do a 100 gram pot and all three are available on my website, my Etsy store and at any of the markets that I attend as well. But if you are a creator yourself why not go and check out Sandra's recipe and see if you want to add that into your range of products as well. Um, if you've enjoyed watching me make my foaming sugar scrubs, please leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. It really does help with my video exposure. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell sign and it will let you know the next time I make a video. So thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye.